Hi everyone, back here for another video. The Yunzi AL66 being a budget-friendly mechanical keyboard, is it worth it and is it really the most satisfying, creamiest keyboard to type on? I would say this has been a great surprise to me and I love typing on this keyboard. So let's see the Yunzi AL66 in full details. Yunzi sent this over last year and I see many of you have shown interest on this keyboard as I saw many views on my YouTube shorts. So here's a dedicated review. Unboxing this keyboard, the packaging is okay, but it's not premium at all. There is this interesting print on the box. It says where artistry meets next level typing. And I didn't understand that until I get to touch the keyboard. More on the typing feel later in the video. The Yunzi AL66 comes with this usual accessories. The keycaps and the switch puller, the charging cable, which is a USB-A to USB-C cable, and they also provide extra keycaps, but I chose to keep the default ones on my keyboard. And finally, the keyboard has this plastic cover, which I can reuse, and I'm always using it to cover the keyboard when I'm not using it. Now looking at the build of the keyboard itself, this keyboard is solid and very heavy. So this one pretty much stays at home and I use it when I work from home. The body they said is aluminum CNC machined body and they use this technical term called anodic oxidation. I think that's how it's pronounced, which they say again, can make the keyboard durable and corrosion resistant, providing better typing. In my own non-technical terms here, when I touch the body of this keyboard, it has the powdery kind of feel, so it's definitely not smooth. And here at the bottom, it's the same solid material. And it has this rubber feed stoppers too. On the sides of the keyboard, there are the RGB lights. Then, and at the back, we have the switches to turn the keyboard on or off, and also to switch between the different operating systems. This is also where the USB-C charging port is. And one of my favorite is the dedicated space for the USB receiver here. So it's easy to keep and not that easy to lose when not in use. As for the keycaps, according again to their website, it is Die Sublimation PBT Cherry Profile Keycaps. I'm not a keyboard expert, but I understand that PBT keycaps are better than ABS and this looks solid indeed, though I'm not fully convinced and maybe it's due to the way the prints are done. I don't know, personally, it just does not look so premium for me when I compare it to the keycaps of, let's say, the low free flow. Now, moving on to the typing feel, which is the most important and main point of this keyboard. First and foremost, I think how Yunzi designed and structured the board contributes a lot on how the typing sound is so satisfyingly creamy and nice. I did not find in Yunzi's website showing how the insides look like, and I don't want to break this keyboard by unscrewing and opening this by myself. So big thanks to the full review by Merkibs. Here is how the inside looks like and check out his video for more expert explanation. Now about the switches. These switches are Yunzi's Milk Linear Switches. This is how it sounds like. And it feels good typing on this. The sound is so good. The only word I can really think of to describe this is that it's creamy and smooth. What's also nice is that the switches are linear so it's soft to the touch and it doesn't need a lot of force to type on. But it's also not that easy to press to make too much typing mistakes. If I, again, compare this to the low free flow, the keys are harder to press on low free. So let's hear some typing sound tests of the Yunzi AL66.
Now let's see what other features the Yunzi AL66 has. And let me know if you think this keyboard is still at a price of less than $100. So first, let's get this out of the way. And here I'm referring to this knob here. Do I think it's a gimmick? Well, yes and no, I guess. Yes, because I think it's there just for aesthetic purposes. It makes the keyboard look different. Take note, I say different and not unique, as this keyboard seems to be sold as well by other brands. I also think it's kind of not a gimmick as it serves two purposes that reduces the keys I press. So it comes in handy sometimes. This knob works as the volume control. And again, that is handy for me since this keyboard has no function keys. So it's not easy to find which number is the volume control. Second function is for the backlight brightness control. And to switch to this function, I have to press and hold on the knob, wait for the lights to blink, and then it's switched. Again, it's handy for same reason as the volume control. I don't always remember which number I have to press along with the function key to do this action. So just using the knob is kind of handy. Okay, so let's move on to the next feature. And that is this keyboard can connect to three devices like my iPad, my Windows laptop. And this can also work with Android. As we see here, I'm using it with my Samsung Tab S8. Switching devices is kind of like a two-step process. That is if I use two different operating systems. First, I have to press function plus either Q, W, and E. Then I need to flick this switch at the back to change to either Mac, so it can work with my iPad, or switch to Windows, which obviously is for Windows. And this is also the switch for Android. I don't notice any lag when I'm connected by Bluetooth, so I hope it stays that way forever. There are two other ways to connect the keyboard, and that is by the USB receiver, which, if not in use, again, it's nicely tucked in this dedicated slot. And the last way is to connect by the charging cable, which obviously it's not just for charging, but also to make it as a wired keyboard. But then, I have to flick the switch here that says line to turn it into a wired keyboard. Next feature, of course, this keyboard has RGB lights. To switch the RGB light styles, the shortcut is function plus the backslash. And to adjust the brightness, the shortcut is function plus arrow up or down. And the light speed can also be adjusted by doing function plus the arrow left or right. And then to turn off the backlights, you have to do function plus the backspace. This keyboard also has the white backlights for simple look or lighting. Do the shortcut function plus tab to change from RGB to the white backlights. However, there's no adjustment on the brightness for the white lights. It seems to stay at only one level of brightness. Next feature that may be interesting for some, but surely not for me, Yunzi has its own software to customize the keys, the lights, and to create macros. I haven't tried it, so not sure how it works, but it's there if you're interested about this feature. As for the battery, since I got this keyboard, I have not charged it yet, and still I have 83% of battery. And that is even I leave the side lights turned on, as sometimes I forget to turn it off. But I also have not been using it every day because first, I cannot take this to the office as it's too heavy. And second, I have other keyboards that I test and I switch to. So stay tuned as coming soon is a comparison of this keyboard with the low free flow. I guess if you're watching my video and stayed until the end, you are really interested to get this Yunzi AL66 keyboard. So I hope this video helps you in some way. I would be interested to know what do you think of this keyboard. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Okay.